Good day, fellow investors. Value investors, towards the end of February, read Warren Buffett's annual letter. And in his letter, he shows that he's watching our channel. Well, he might not be watching, but the line of thought is very, very similar. We'll discuss that later. So if you like Buffett, subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell to get notified when there is a valuable video for you. Let me dig into the content. There are five things that I want to discuss, perhaps go a little bit deeper than Buffett and share with you that are extremely important when it comes to investing. Everything you need to know about investing is summarized in Warren Buffett's letters to shareholders. We'll discuss just a little bit that investing is about you. You have to pick what you want. There we're going to dig into the accounting and the hidden earnings that Berkshire has, the free, let's say, advantages that Berkshire gives to investors over other things. And what should we focus on when it comes to investing? Earnings, retained earnings, and then just comment a little bit on Warren's unfortunate but a really honest and open discussion about the future ahead. Let's immediately start with the start of his letter discussing the earnings. Warren Buffett did 20% per year for the last 50 years, 52 free years, and the S&P 500 did 10%. The difference is staggering when you compound those 10 percent percentage points of difference, the difference is staggering. But the S&P 500 is still, has been still an amazing investment. Of course, but Buffett did better. But here I really want to emphasize, and this is also I think Warren Buffett's message, you have to find the investment that best suits you. Holding Berkshire is, you're owning just one business, you are putting all your money, if you did it 50 years ago, trusting Warren Buffett, owning an index fund, means that you trust the whole economy. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to think about anything. Of course, now Warren Buffett does that too for you. So Berkshire can also be considered an index fund, but this is just a mindset issue that we can look very, very back into. And it was not an easy decision. However, Warren Buffett investing in businesses, and we'll later discuss exactly what to look in those businesses made a great return. And I think that it's up to you which return you want to go for. Index funds will probably return five to 6% over the long term. Investing into individual businesses with the right mindset will deliver more, but you have to also put more effort into it. There is no other. Now let's go on to the accounting profits. Berkshire's profits in this year according to the new accounting rules, looks staggering. He made more than $50 billion on stock market returns, which means that the stock market portfolio went up 50 billion. And according to new uh, rules, accounting rules, he has to include that into the bottom line. So you will see Berkshire Hathaway with the price earnings ratio in the single digits now in all the financial data. However, as he says it, Next year it can be down. So earnings, Berkshire's bottom line earnings is not a measure to look at. The measure to look at are Berkshire's operating earnings. However, there is something more important. Berkshire reports only the earnings that it has to report accounting wise. Earnings of Apple, they report only the dividend that they get from Apple. The difference between the payout and the dividend and real Apple's earnings is not reported into Berkshire's earnings because of accounting. And therefore you have to understand the accounting and that brings you back to what are the real earnings from Berkshire. And that's something Buffett emphasized. And that's something we discussed in a video where I analyzed Berkshire from August of last year. And that's why I say perhaps Buffett got the idea there. But just apart from the jokes, the mindset of this channel is similar to Buffett's. Let's dig deeper into the accounting and the earnings. Buffett mentions a book from the 1920s called Common Stocks as Long-Term Investments from Edgar Lawrence Smith, discussing how common stocks will do great because they are not paying out all the earnings that they have. They retain those earnings, part of that. They reinvest those earnings and that allows the power of compounding here where Keynes gave a review on the book. So retain a part of their profits and put them back into the business. Thus, there is an element of compound interest 
in investing in stocks which other investments don't really have. If we then look into the power of, the re of retained earnings, a little bit more on accounting, if you own more than 50% of a company, 100% of the earnings gets consolidated into your operational earnings. Berkshire owns 100% of Burlington Northern Santa Fe, complete earnings from Burlington go into Berkshire's operating earnings. However, they do not control Apple and only dividends are recorded. And this is part of the video I made on Berkshire in August. Watch that video. It's also in the links, the, in the link in the description below. And you see here all of Berkshire's stock assets and the hidden earnings. Only the dividends is reported, but the dividend payout ratio is really, really low. So Berkshire's earnings are much, much higher than here I turned it into a billions discussion and here Warren Buffett did the same in his recent letter discussing how dividends are just 3.7 billion but the real retained earnings are 8 billion and then you further go into compounding on that because the return on equity from those businesses is extremely high. So Mr. Smith from the book got it right. It's all about returns on equity. It's returns on invested earnings, retained earnings. To dig deeper into Buffett's earnings, operational earnings, which you want to focus on, we have Burlington Railroad, Berkshire Hathaway Energy making 8.3 billion in 2019, Clayton Homes and other four businesses 4.8 billion, other five businesses 1.9 billion, and then the re remaining 2.7 billion for a total of 17.7 billion. These are the operating earnings you have to focus on, adding the hidden earnings from the previously discussed non-reported earnings because they don't own the company, so they just report what they get into dividends. So these 5 billion in difference has to be added to the 17 billion we discussed here. And then further, on insurance, insurance earnings aren't that high, but what's very important is the float that allows them to invest more money, that allows them to have a protection, margin of safety, and they have a lot of cash on their balance sheet, which is another advantage that Berkshire has. Hidden earnings and, of course, cash. So to continue on the power of retained earnings, what does it mean over the long term? And that's what Buffett is buying. That's what Buffett is always has been focused on. If you look at the American Express company that they bought a long time ago, they paid 1.2 billion for their share. Now it's worth 18.8 billion, not even counting all the dividends that came into. Similarly, the Coca-Cola company, 1.3 billion invested, 22 billion is the current value. Again, not counting the dividends that came alongside that. Similarly, Visa, compounding. And the message here is pretty simple. You just invest in a few good businesses and the rest is done by itself. You invest in many more. Some will do well, some will do not so well. But the key is that you hold on to, on to, to those that do amazingly and that can compound earnings. And you compound earnings, retained earnings, if you can focus on the return on net tangible equity, which is the return on the uh, retained earnings, to run the business. And if that is higher than 20%, as it is for the companies listed here, then you know you have great businesses. And focus on what you can know, not on what you can't know. Charlie and Warren don't focus on the 248 billion of market valuation. They focus on the businesses, they focus on what they own, and they don't care whether the Fed will increase interest rates, whether it will lower or whatever. So focus on what you can, focus on the businesses, forget about everything else. This is the best message about the market, economy, news, pundits, and ever you, everything you can hear. And it's almost certain that equities will do well over time and do better because of the power of compounding. 
So there will always be a warning. This is pure Buffett. Always know, okay, stocks can fall 50%. You just have to stay disciplined, buy more. And if you can control your emotions and do not use borrowed money, this is also a topic for this environment because there is a lot of borrowed money, you'll do extremely well. So what are the three key components of Berkshire Hathaway that it offers to investors that are better than pretty much all the rest? First, they have great businesses with extremely high return on tangible equity, plus the 20%. They have that compounding hidden earnings, 5 billion in hidden earnings that's not reported and that is constantly growing. Those hidden earnings are constantly growing thanks to buybacks, which is another thing that, let's say, the S&P 500 doesn't offer. Through those hidden earnings, they compound, they increase and they have a lot of, as we said, cash that is, let's say, a hedge against whatever might happen in the future from a crash, from other opportunities, from buying big businesses, big insurance businesses that might go bankrupt. And then you have you everything is summarized with Berkshire mindset of investing in long term businesses, of sticking to what we know and what we do best, low risk, no risk, finding businesses that will compound, which is something that is much different than the current corporate environment think of Tesla, but it's something that works over the long term. And therefore, that's the advantage that Berkshire offers, apart from a low price earnings ratio compared to the market. So on the road ahead, the company is 100% prepared for Warren and Munger's departure, unfortunately, and he has 99% of his net worth put into Berkshire stock. He says S&P 500 is a great investment, but you have to see whether it is for you. And what he does, 99% of his wealth into Berkshire, sends a clear message that Berkshire is still better than the S&P 500 because of the three key advantages it offers. A quick comment to finish on the corporate environment, how everybody is focused on fees, big mergers that the bank, the investment banks and the directors get fees, bigger fees for being in those boards. And that's something Warren Buffett doesn't like. That's something is the advantage again of Berkshire Hathaway, where they can remain lean and focused on delivering returns to shareholder to shareholders. Don't ask Wall Street, don't ask a barber whether you need a haircut. Thank you for watching. Looking forward to your comments. Subscribe, click that notification bell. Don't forget to watch the other Warren Buffett video that I made in August that discusses the valuation of Berkshire and I'll see you in the next video.